All right, so let's get on to colour analysis tip number one. First of all, this is for your mental health. I'm, I'm being serious about this, your peace of mind. Decide how you are going to present colour because you do not have to do it the way it was done to you. So there are there are loads of different colour um, analysis, what should we call them, methods, theories, approaches, ways, the way. And deciding on which you should use is rather important. So I've just had a question, actually, from somebody, a uh, lovely lady who's just um, uh, two weeks ago, I can't remember, so, uh, signed up for my colour analysis training in a box. And she's asked this self-same question. And in fact, I think uh, Susanna's just asked a similar question about this for a webinar that I'm going to run at the end of March, which Susanna knows about. I haven't told everybody else yet. Uh, if you're in my colour confidence expert group, you'll know about that. So this is, should you use the Four Seasons Theory? Should you use the six tonal directional theory? Should you use the 12 seasons, the 16 seasons, the 73,000 million billion seasons? I mean, does it flip in matter what you call it? So hundreds of years ago, before I created my colour analysis training, Ermintrude came to train with me in person. And uh, I was happily explaining to her, <laughs> as you do, because you think you know what you're doing. I was explaining how seasonal and tonal are the same thing. You start with seasonal, it always leads you to tonal. You start with tonal, it always leads you to seasonal. And Ermintrude said, well, I'm finding this really confusing. Can we just do the seasons instead? And that was very early on. It was probably, I don't know, 17, 16, 17 years ago when that happened. And, and, and Ermintrude and her husband, they still send Christmas cards every year. It's fabulous, absolutely fabulous. <clears throat> so I'm still in touch with her. And uh, it taught me right there and then that what I was teaching her Oh, oh, sorry. The way I was teaching was not relevant for Ermintrude. There were two things going on that I discovered that her learning style was different from mine. And also she was colorblind where reds are concerned. So I've got my drapes out here, which I can't reach now because I've <clears throat> let me just pull them a little closer. And let me just get my reds. I have my four reds together. So excuse me if I've disappeared off the screen, but here we go. Oops. Well, these are the four reds. These are my four reds. <clears throat> and even though you might not be able to see them, the differences between them on this video screen, and don't forget, your video screen is nothing like mine. It does not reproduce colour in the same way mine does at all. And sometimes reds can be quite confusing, especially to people who are colourblind. Now, bear in mind, when people are colourblind, they're not always blanket colourblind. Like Ermintrude, some people are just red colourblind. Some people are just green colour blind. Be careful, don't make assumptions. And I put these reds out on the floor. Um, in my, I used to do all the training in my front room and we had a cream carpet deliberately fitted for this purpose so that we could lay all the drapes out on the floor. And Irma True took one look and she said, I can't see any differences at all. She said, I've always thought that I might be colorblind where reds are concerned. I had to change my entire approach. My entire approach. Thank goodness. Because now my training 
and re redesigned it. Now my training caters for people who are colorblind, caters for people who are blind, caters for people who have a different learning modality from me. But what you need to start with is what works for you. And then make sure that you supply that information in a way that your client understands it. You can't just, well, you can. I suppose you can go to any of the big training companies and they'll just teach you a, a way by rote, a checklist to, to churn out color analysis, but it doesn't work for everybody, clearly. My approach is, as you might know, stuff the system and put the client first. So decide how you're going to present color. It's very important. Now, I, run a, I don't run a franchise. So you're free to, if you decide to train with me, so you've got, you could just pick up whatever I say. In, <laughs> you can bin the lot, you can ditch it. It's entirely up to you. I make no expectations that you have to use mine, that you don't have to say that you've trained with me at all. You can pick the bits that you like and ditch the rest. But what you you need to do is make a decision. How are you going to present colour? Are you going to use the seasonal approach or the tonal approach or both? Because until you make a decision, you can't describe what you do. And if you can't describe what you do, you can't promote your business. It's so logical when you think about it. So anyway, um, Ermintrude came back to me about 18 months later and said, right, got that now, got the seasons because we just focused on seasonal colour. And instead of using reds to describe the four seasons for we, we did red, green and um, red, green, red, blue and yellow. And I introduced greens for Ermintrude, obviously, so that she had an extra set of colours to work with. And I put that into the training. So that caters for everybody. She went away and worked with that for 18 months and had some marvellous successes. And she came back and said, right, I'm ready now. I'd like to learn tonal. So we did a day on converting seasonal to tonal. And we made sure we did it the other way around as well, tonal to seasonal. And we, we videoed that. And that's a separate training course called the tonal system. So it doesn't matter to me what you choose, but make a decision. Because you can't faff about like a tart in a colander while your client's in front of you. <laughs> you need to have made that decision up front so that she knows what's going on, that you've agreed beforehand what she's going to get and possibly what she's not going to get and that you deliver or present colour in a way that suits you, your personality, your learning style, but also make sure that you include other learning styles and other personality types. Okay, so let's see who else has joined us. Um, ah, Mabel has joined us. Lovely to have you with us. And Clover. Clover, you did make me laugh on the last one with your goat shanks. <laughs> ah, dear. And Julia. Oh, Marta as well. Lovely to have you with us. Excuse me, peering over here. I've got different set up on my, my screens. Julia, I've experienced franchise horrible experience <laughs> never again. I know, but you came through it, Julia. You came through it and you're much better for it. And actually, it's not a bad experience, is it? Because it teaches you what you never want to do yourself. So on that previous webinar that I was talking about where Clover was talking about goat shanks. <laughs> oh dear. You must watch it. It was, what was it called? Um, How a personalised style session say, uh, changed my life. Yes, it was excellent. And that having crap personal style sessions beforehand 
and seriously having the colour consultation of, of, from hell as well, which I've had, taught me how not to do it. So good experience. Okay, so Clover says, you got to love me. <laughs> Certainly have, my darling. Okay, so colour analysis tip number two. This is how to deliver top-notch colour sessions. Okay. One of the, it sounds simple, but I was discussing this um, with uh, two trainers from, well, this company's gone out of business now, uh, two trainers, I don't know, quite a few years ago, and with some people from the hair industry, we were all networking together. And we talked about this, and I realised that this is a, a really simple idea, but it's a, it's massively important for your clients. Learn to identify colours in groups. I know, no, it's very, very simple. But when you get this, your talks and presentations run with ease and grace. Your one-to-ones run smoothly. Your group workshops, it, they're just simpler and more accessible and more fun. Three groups. Uh, warm colours, cool colours and neutrals. That's all it is. So what I've done, rather than hit you with 96,000 drapes, because I could be here all afternoon, because once I get going, I haven't had this drape stand down for a while. <coughs> I asked Neil to get the drape stand down and, and I've just, I just loved it. I just loved going through all the colours. But once I start, I could be here for some time. So let's uh, let's go through these then. So here we've got this is the warm tone safe the safe tonal fan in warm. All right. So here we've got eighteen safe colours, all warm. You need to be able to identify whether a colour is warm or cool or neutral immediately. So you need to spend some time practicing. And, and the re we were talking, as I say, in this group with, with some hair, some people from the world of hair, some hair experts. There were some master colour expert trainers from Weller there. And I showed them these wallets and they could not immediately identify warm and cool. And they went away and started to include this in their training course to make sure that colorists, hair colorists can do this in the salon. And they realized that if they couldn't do it, the trainers couldn't do it. They clearly weren't teaching that on. And it just, it was just such a simple concept, but it is crucial. So those were the warm ones. And so some of those colors, I, I'm not saying they're all in there, but I've got a list here if you, if you're interested. I mean, you can print the contents of these wallets off from the Colour Supplies website. But you, when you're looking for warm colours, you need to look for a golden um, yellow, a golden yellow or an orange tone. So here are some of the, the, the names we use in English. Peach, coral, salmon, orange, rust, terracotta, um, orange red or tomato red, whatever you want to call it. Soft or periwinkle blue. I'm not always convinced about that one. Moss green, lime green. I hate lime green, but it is warm. Golden yellow, mustard. So those are some of the, the, the colours you might want to pick the drapes off and uh, or look at the wallets, as I've said, and remind yourself these are warm colours. I know it sounds ridiculous, but sometimes we don't do these simple things. So here's the cool one. This is the safe tonal cool wallet. And so these aren't the colours in this wallet. But let me just read you a list of cool colours where you're looking for a rose tone or a blue 
undertone. So rose pink, fuchsia, magenta, lavender, royal blue, plum, burgundy, maroon, any blue red, aubergine, pine green, emerald green, jade, again jade. I mean, is jade a warm colour or is it a cool? I don't know. I would argue over some of these suggestions. These are the ones that came out of that talk we had. And then the third group are neutrals. And you can split those into cool neutrals and warm neutrals and universal neutrals. So neutrals could be, for instance, the four, let me just find here, the four drapes. Have I got four or five here? I can't remember. But anyway. So here are four, the four lightest neutrals. Well, two of them are warm and two of them are cool. Can you identify them straight away? Because if you can't, how the heck do you expect your client to do that? Do the same with your darkest neutrals. Um, <clears throat> do the same with universal neutrals as well. Some of those could be slightly warmer than others. It depends on your perspective. It depends on context as well. Now, in Colour Analysis in a Box, you'll find loads of extra training materials because I always <laughs> give you all my documents because I'm a mad woman. And if you, you're looking for these lists of neutrals, I, I did this for, um, like I said, this, this lady who uh, had ordered Colour in a Box the other day. If you look on, if you go to your online training account and click on color analysis in a box, under B, additional resources, you will find two PDFs that you can print off. Universal colors to be used as neutrals, and then there's a second document all about neutrals. And if you haven't got color analysis in a box, there's loads of stuff about neutrals in the CSI vault. That's my monthly membership program where you can just join for a month, uh, read the hundred and goodness knows how many articles and videos uh, and and cancel whenever you feel like it. But there's lo I put loads of stuff about neutrals in there. In January, January, yes, January this month, uh, this year. <laughs> OK, so like I say, really simple, but it can it gives you credibility. It gives you expert status when you can identify colors immediately. So you need to be doing this on a daily basis. Practice everything you see. Cool, warm, neutral. Cool, warm, neutral. Oh, two cools. Oh, two neutrals. I know you end up sounding like a mad woman, but when you're as you, you're probably here because you're mad about color. So what what the hell? Just enjoy it. And when you can do this and bring that enthusiasm into your colour sessions, oh my goodness, you're delivering far more than just information. Don't you realise it's not, they're, they're not there for information. They're there for the experience. They want to feel what you feel about colour. They want to absorb some of this vibration that you're this frequency that you're vibrating at, they want to absorb what you know and what you love because that's why they came to you, isn't it? Yes, Kim, it is. So Clover says, do you mean combinations? I don't know. Do I mean? I've probably moved on, Clover, sorry. Uh, Shahed has just joined us. If I've mispronounced your name, then I do apologize. Tell me how to pronounce that. Susanna says, I'm already doing this unconsciously. Cool, warm, neutral, cool, warm, neutral. <laughs> oh, thank goodness for that. Good. And in that vein, then color analysis uh, tip number three is learn how to use your drapes. Now, can I temper this, please? I am not saying become obsessed with your drapes. Do not make drapes. 
the center of your color sessions because color analysis is not about the blasted drapes. All right. They are tools in your toolbox. But as my most wonderful image mentor taught me, um, Bill used to say, oh, darling, this is theater. You need the drapes. You need to use drapes with your clients who are visual learners. I'm not. Sit me in front of a mirror and drape me and I am bored out of my tree. I'm an auditory learner. Uh, the kinesthetics want to experience it. They want to feel. So the drapes are good for them to feel it. I'm more interested in words, but I am as a woman in a minority. OK, so most of your clients will be visual. So, they, yeah, they want to see the drapes. All right. So learn how to use them properly, please. So Clover says, sorry. Um, right. What I meant was, do you mean decide colors into combinations of colors to share with your clients? Because that is one of the things my clients have found useful. Oh, absolutely. But this is about using the, yes, this is about using the drapes. So funnily enough, that's what I'm just about to talk about. All right. OK, so drapes. I've just shown you drapes. Let me find one that doesn't make me look absolutely ghastly. OK, a drape. This is a drape. A drape. It's not a curtain. It's a drape. It's often a rectangle of precision dyed some. Well, this, these are cotton poplin. And they're designed to stretch from one shoulder to the other when placed directly under your client's face. OK. And they've got a label on. That's why I've. So that's what they're intended to do. And what I do is they arrive all in one piece and then you fold them into four. And with a pair of pinking shears, you cut out a neck. OK, can you see that you cut out a, a neck so that they lie flat. Now, if you prefer to work with them folded into four, that's entirely up to you. You need to decide this before you get your paying clients. How are you going to use your drapes? Is it like this? Or is it across here? I don't really like this bit at all. I like to get the drape around here, but I don't do that immediately. I approach the, the, the client with a bit of a drape. So I might fold it long ways and put it over here just to introduce the color and then maybe work it round. I don't want to frighten the poor lamb to death. Okay, so the purpose of a draping session, <laughs> oh dear, you probably get fed up of me saying this. It is not for you to show off how brilliant you are. The purpose is to determine which season or tonal direction your client is so that you can help her to choose the specific colours to wear that make her look absolutely fabulous. So they're a prop, they're a tool. Now, in my colour analysis training programme, there are lots of, uh, in the colour analysis training manual, I suggest, let me just put that back in case I need it again. Um, I provide lots of um, specific drape colours to use for comparison purposes. Now, these are based on the drapes we provide. That is not to say you have to use the drapes we provide. No, you don't. You can use anybody's drapes. I deliberately designed my training course to work with anybody's drapes. If the colour suppliers decided to stop producing colour supplies tomorrow, it does not affect my training programme at all. But these drapes have a label on. And they have a number. So this one is called Warm Purple 
It's drape number 39. The season is autumn and the tone is W, which is warm, obviously, or war, WM stroke DK, which is warm, dark. All the tonal uh, notations that are written on these are available in the wholesale catalogue. Uh, they're already in your colour analysis training additional resources. So if you want to check, for instance, that your client is warm or cool, that's the way my training works. So you might want to, to write these down because you don't have to use my drapes. I'm not going to give you the numbers. These are just names of drapes. These are names of, sorry, not names of drapes, names of colours. So you might want to compare orange red with a light blue red. If your client looks better in the orange red, she's probably warm. If she looks better in the light blue red, she's probably cool. But you can't make a distinct, you can't make a diagnosis on one comparison. <laughs> so you might then want to go on and compare dark yellow green with emerald green, because dark yellow green is distinctly warm, emerald green is distinctly blue based. You might want to compare, compare dark periwinkle blue with grey navy. You might want to compare warm purple with royal purple. Frankly, I can't see a flipping difference. And the same with the yellows. There's, uh, there's lemon yellow and light lemon yellow. Is there a difference? I can't tell a difference. And you might want to compare salmon with clear bright pink. Now, <laughs> you might not see a difference. Your client might not see a difference. But if you have a number of these comparisons, you can score points, can't you? Yes, Kim, I can. So you can say, well, actually, we've done five comparisons or seven comparisons. Don't do any more. I mean, seriously, it's not about the drapes. It's about the results. But five or seven comparisons is enough. It's a nice odd number. Score points. How many looked better on the warm side compared with how many looked better on the cool side? Now, to be able to do this, you have to know your drapes. So my drapes are laid out in there's reds, pinks, purples. Then it goes to... I've got my navies, then I've got my um, Armani colours, my lightest neutrals next to my darkest neutrals. Then I've got my blues all together, my greens all together. And then we go into yellows all together and orangey, corally peaches all together. And then all my browns together, and which brings me back to my reds. But does that work for you? Can you find the drape you want immediately? Mm -hmm. Because if you can't, then you're going to be, well, you'll look less than professional. So you need to find, be able to find your drapes easily. All right. You need to set your drape stand up so that you can find your drapes. You need to set your drape stand up uh, in the way that suits you. That's just the way that works for me. I have had all my winter colours together, all my summer colours together, etc. And then thought, oh, rats, that doesn't work for the tonal. What do I do? Buy another drape stand? Buy another set of drapes? That's ridiculous. So for me, the way my brain works is all my lightest neutrals go together. All my darkest neutrals go together. All my reds go together. That just works for me. Practice. You need to learn how to use your drapes, how to present them and how to make your draping session efficient. If you can't find a drape. You know, here I am. I'm. Oh, and the other thing is don't have 180 drapes. What do we sell? I think we sell 173. 
Yes, at one point I had 180 drapes. It's like wading through sludge trying to find the drape you want because there's too many, unless you've got an entire wall that you could allocate uh, to, to hook your drapes over. And what I do is um, I have, let's, let's pick a, a colour that looks okay. So here we've got a, a pinky colour. I don't know what this one is. I think the, the label's dropped off. And I put in the corner, I have a drape clip and I hook my drapes over the drape stand. Now, at the beginning of a consultation, I say to a client, what I'd like to do, what, what I'd like you to do is choose three drapes that you love, two that you hate. And I say to them, I give them very specific instructions. Please take the drapes off the stand with the hook still attached. I just, I'm just bossy. But if you take the drape off with the hook still attached, then you can hook it back on very quickly. Whereas if they pull the drape off, you're left with hooks hanging on the, the stand. You've got drapes all over the place. You can't find where the flipping heck it goes. I give my clients specific instructions because I know how I want them to use the drapes as well. OK. Just little tips, but they really work. Now, in the course manual, there are other, there are similar lists for comparing deep versus light, bright versus muted, um, also spring versus summer, um, spring versus winter, spring versus autumn, etc. All the other permutations you can think of. So you need to understand the drapes you're going to use. Now, perhaps when you start off, what I suggest is that you maybe look at those comparison lists. They're in the course manual. If you go to page 13 to 17, the lists are there. And you take those drapes off your stand and maybe put, hang them over the back of a chair. And you have those comparison drapes ready to try with your clients. Later on, as you get to know your drapes, you will be able to do that just by reaching for them because you will have worked with them on a regular basis. Okay, so I've put that back. Yes, good. <clears throat> okay, you have to work, you have to understand your props. Can you imagine the plumber coming and saying, oh, I don't know whether I should use a lump hammer or wonder which size spanner I need. I mean, He's the expert. He should know which blooming size spanner to use to rescue your pipes that are, are frozen and are, ex are about to explode. It's the same with you. You're the expert. You're the professional. Learn about your props. OK, so we've done three tips. They're the, 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 the ones I wanted to spend a little bit of time on. Susan says, oh, Glenda's joined us. Lovely. Susan said, you just made me smile. I met a new client last week and she was keen, almost ins insistent that she try every shade of every colour and ask why they're different. Lovely lady. I'm sure she's a lovely lady. But part of your job as the consultant is to learn, is to decide how to deliver colour and stick to it. Do not be swayed by what the client thinks she wants. You're the expert. You wouldn't you wouldn't go to um, uh, like Neil will be seeing his consultant on Monday. This is why the offer has to end at the end of Monday, because he's we're at the hospital on Monday. He'll be seeing his consultant. He won't sit there and tell Mr. Mertzer that, uh, oh, no, I don't think we should do that. Uh, what I'd like you to do instead of dealing with my nose, which is what the operation's about, I'd like you to um, uh, operate on my knee. You know, I mean, you're the expert, for goodness sakes. Play the expert role. Get it into your head that you're the expert. Don't listen to these clients. <laughs> They're there to learn from you. They're le there to have an experience. Anna's joined as well. Lovely to have you with us. 
Marta says salmon. I'm not sure why, but I'm sure it was <laughs> pertinent at the point. Susan says, I've set up my drape stand in a similar way to you. My drape stand has 12 arms, so they're not crammed in. They're great, aren't they, those drape stands with the 12 arms? Mine's got just four sides. I'm not going to pick it up and bring it over because it'll fall apart. It's got a severe list to the left. A bit like me, Neil says. He's a dear heart. It's a wonder he's still alive. <laughs> Ah, it is. Susan says, I find that if the client starts pulling the clips off, they tend to break them. Oh, yes. I always have a bag of drape clips available because the um, plastic perishes. So I always have spare clips to hand, always. <clears throat> Susanna says, you are gorgeously professional on the tonal taster very inspiring you are lovely thank you and susan says i did bring her into line of course you did susan because you've got that underpinning of the red so let's get on then let's get back to some of our color analysis tips okay so now i've blethered on about how to use your drapes number four is do you need drapes at all? Oh, yes. Now, in Colour Analysis in a Box, Expert Edition, I show you exactly which drapes to use. And they will produce a seasonal diagnosis and a tonal diagnosis. And it doesn't matter where you start. But I also show you how to do colour analysis without a drape in sight. That's a little bit of what Susanna very kindly was talking about with the tonal taster. You do colour analysis without a drape in sight. You will notice in the tonal taster, I introduce the drapes for the ladies in the group that I'm diagnosing to look at later as confirmation because it's theatre and because a lot of those ladies, the majority of those ladies will be visual learners and the drapes will help confirm or affirm what I've already told them. However, if a possible client uh, nabs you in the Tesco queue, for those of you who don't know, Tesco is a, what is it? A grocery store. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to need to lie down in a darkened room after this and a large gin, clearly. <laughs> it's like um, it's like a big, like Sainsbury's and Marks and Spencer, you know, the food department. But say you're at the checkout in, in Tesco and, and you start talking to somebody or you're in a, a boutique and you start talking to somebody who could be a possible client are you going to have your drapes with you? I think not, unless you're a mad woman, of course, and you're on your way to give a talk. <coughs> Even my little grab bag like this. This is my little grab bag, OK, with my drapes in. You don't think I carry that around, do you? No, I don't. I don't even I don't carry a wallet because I'm an auditory learner. A swatch wallet is about as much use to me as, as a chocolate teapot. It just doesn't work. And I'm not looking for personal clients. Perhaps maybe you should carry your swatch wallet around with you just to show potential clients. But if you haven't got anything with you, your props, and a possible client challenges you about colour, what are you going to do? What are you going to say? Well, sorry, I can't do that without my drapes. You're going to look real non-professional, shall we say. I have picked up loads of clients, loads of paying clients, simply by, a, by being able to give them even one little tip on the spot. So this is why I say get to know warm colours, cool colours, neutrals, 
how to use your drapes, because when you work with your drapes, you can translate that knowledge, that skill of working with your drapes into whatever is available. So it might be the colour on the front of a Rice Krispies packet. It might be the the colour of a pair of shoes that somebody is just walking by with. It might be the colour of the lady's purse or a handbag or the jacket she's wearing or something you're wearing or the colour of a fruit or a vegetable. You don't need the blaster drapes. <laughs> and this is why I'm saying to you, learn to work with colour, learn to understand colour, use it on a daily basis, like um, going around saying, that's a warm colour, that's a cool colour, that's a neutral colour. Teach yourself how to identify colours, and it's not just clothes, not just makeup or hair colours or nail polish or jewellery. It's anything, anything at all. I, I know I've been doing this for 40 years because I'm a terribly old dinosaur, but I still do it. I still... I'm still looking at colour every day. You should be doing this regularly. And one of those clients that uh, I, I was able to help in this way, she introduced me to her boss. And she said to him, uh, because Kim clearly knows her stuff inside out. That's what that had demonstrated to her. And that introduction to that one uh, CEO gave me two years of regular and extremely lucrative image work with his company. Do not underestimate what I'm blethering on about. You might think, oh, well, if you think, oh, you're in the wrong business. <laughs> now, we've already mentioned some of this, but this is colour analysis tip number five. This is please Spend time on neutrals. It isn't about colour. In fact, spend lots of time on neutrals because this is really where your client should be investing her money. These are often the most useful colours that your client will wear. As I've said, I've already provided lists for you. They're in the colour analysis training in a box. But why not, for starters, try these? So if you want to write some of these down, that's great. You might. <clears throat> so I've done this uh, on a tonal basis, just, just to uh, break things up a bit. So if you think you've got a warm client, <clears throat> then camel, moss green, brown, caramel. Try them. Suggest them. So you're looking at a client in a shop or at the Tesco checkout or at the school gates or in a bar or whatever, and you think she's warm. I think she'd look really good in camel or moss green. And you say to her, yeah, I, I really strongly recommend you invest in a winter coat. Maybe that's what she's asking for advice about or a jacket or a cardigan. Moss green would be really good for you because it will go with everything else. That one tip could bring that client to you as a paying client. That one tip could lead to recommendations. Seriously, seriously, don't underestimate the power of a single small tip. If, you, if you've got a cool client, grey, black or navy, they always work. Bright client. This could be black again, it could be charcoal, it could be royal blue, could be navy, could even be red. Depend. That's more about their personality, of course. If you've got a client who's soft muted, well, the Armani colours, where are they? Um, here we go. So any of the four Armani colours would be, oh, I've only got, don't know what I've done there. Anyway, I might have got the wrong ones, but there's medium bronze, green, grey, olive green, whatever the other one is. Um, rose brown, I think it is. Yeah. So if you if you've got somebody who really looks good in muted colours, 
and you think, I could just give away a little tip here. Any of those colours will work. If you've got a deep lady, so maybe she's got dark hair and dark eyes and you can't see the colour of her eyes, it's often a bit of a giveaway. Then black or maroon or a deep brown or an aubergine. And if you've got a light lady, then stone or taup or pewter, navy or light grey. One great tip for you is, um, here we go. This is the, oh, why am I using gold? <laughs> because I'm a very stupid woman sometimes. Let me use silver. Why would I put gold in front of me? Julia will keel over and die. <laughs> So this is the silver, um, it's called antique silver, number 303. But on the back, this is what I use for pewter. And that you, it's the same on the back of the antique gold drape as well. Just a little tip for you. They don't do a pewter drape, but that works. You see, any good colour consultant will make sure that every client knows her best lightest neutrals, and her best darkest neutral before picking out any accent colours. Pretty obvious, really. Pretty obvious. OK, so colour analysis tip number six. Oh, Geeta's just joined us. Lovely. Uh, lovely to have you with us. Susan says, have to go. Howard needs his tea. Of course he does. Give my best to Howard and then off to choir practice. Marvellous have to come down and, and listen to you sing sometime and speak to Howard about planes and things, Susan. <coughs> OK, colour analysis tip number six. Please. Yes, you know everything. <coughs> I'm sorry, but this always makes me laugh. When we start out, we're so keen to impress our clients with what we know and how much we know. We think we have to dump the whole of our training course on every single person. Please don't do that. The tip is do not overwhelm your client. After all, you will be seeing her again and again and again, won't you? Yes, Kim, is the reply. In any case, from the very first time that your client comes to you for a session, she's only going to remember three things. What to wear, what not to wear, and which season she is, or which tonal direction, however you work. And you, <laughs> especially with women who are yellow colour psychology types and visual learners. The, the combination is quite important here. <laughs> you need to check your client regularly for eyes glazing over syndrome. You see, when you've hit them with too much information, their eyes just glaze over. Stop it. Just learn to look, you know, stop rattling on. In fact, learn to shut up now and again. I know I rattle on in these, but with a client, it's very different. I try and keep my mouth shut for at least the first 45 minutes. I want to listen to what she's got to say. And then throughout the consultation, learn to deliver a piece of information and then shut up. <laughs> Give her a chance to register or come back from fairyland, wherever she's been. And you discuss that. If she can handle a little bit more, and this would be down to her colour psychology type, then I would suggest you briefly mention how to wear any colour. So that's particularly though uh, for those clients who are driven by fashion. They would never work with me because that's not what I am at all. I have no time for, for following current fashion trends. Anyway, <laughs> different webinar. But if you have a client, and I, I, I did train 
1999 with uh, I was paired with a lady who was absolutely mad on fashion. Did me good because she drove me at the wall. Oh, well, this is in fashion. I wanted to slap her, but <laughs> that's just me and my red psychology type. And she will work very well. <clears throat> and I won't with people of the same ilk. So this is part of understanding who you want to work with and who you don't want to work with. And if people are really driven by fashion and you might find that out if you shut up long enough to let them tell you, then you can say to I can show you how to wear any colour that is in fashion. This is a huge marketing point. And also, um, this is cultural and it could be different in your country, your part of the world, but how to wear black. Particularly if she's not a strong winter or a deep. At some point in our culture, in my culture, in my country, in the West, we need to wear black. It could be a uniform at work or it could be for a funeral. I think that's, well, you know what I mean. It could be another colour in your country. <coughs> so don't overwhelm your client. Just tell her the colours to wear, the colours to avoid and what season she is at the first colour consultation or workshop or session or whatever it is you want to call it. <coughs> and it's the same if you're giving a presentation. That's what I do at the Tonal Taster. I talk about all the ladies in the room who are, let, let me pick a different one, bright. All the ladies in the room who are bright, you can wear these colours safely tonight. And you should avoid all the colours that are soft muted. Because your tonal direction is bright. Simples, isn't it? Absolutely simples. So you're telling people what to wear. You're telling them what to avoid. And you're giving them, for those who need a title, you're giving them uh, something, a title to latch on to. OK, that's all. You so don't overwhelm her with everything. Make sure that she's going to come back to you <coughs> for another session to cover the things that you've not managed to cover today. You're a consultant. Allow her to consult you and she will develop as she goes away and starts thinking about your um, the colours you've you've told her to wear, the colours you've told her to avoid. The, and, and how to, to perhaps to use a lightest neutral and a darkest neutral and maybe one or two accent colours. That's all she needs. Send her away. I give everybody homework, as you probably know. And I say, right, when you come back, I want to know how you've got on. So if you need to keep a diary, you need to keep a diary. And I need to see photographs. And then she comes back and you take the results of that experiment time and then you move on. Quite why anybody wants to see a, a client once, I don't know. Anyway, your business. I don't run a franchise, but it's your business. Let me just check on. Sorry, I can't get my mouse to work. Oh, Marie's joined and Tina. Lovely to have you with us as well. And Vanessa just hopped on for a few minutes. Perfect. Positively perfect. OK, right. So let's go back to the last tip. Number seven, client handouts. Now, I've already mentioned this. Not every client wants a colour swatch wallet. Shock horror. <laughs> My swatch wallet went in a drawer in 1982. I think it was probably October 1982 for reasons I don't need to explain. And I haven't looked at it since. I found it the other day when I was sorting my office out. 
and filing things away. And I just put it in the bottom of a box. I opened it and thought, <laughs> right, close it again and put it in the box. I am an auditory learner and there are plenty of others out there who are auditory learners as well. Assume nothing. <laughs> OK. But even if your client doesn't want a swatch wallet, most people will like to take away some kind of client handout. And you can prepare a client handout for each season or for each tonal direction. Now, I've done them all for you. There are client handouts for all four seasons and for all six tones in color analysis training in a box. You can simply print them off as they are and just use them. You could print them off today and give them to a client this afternoon. Or you can copy and paste the contents and create your own. And obviously add I would recommend that you add your uh, contact details because these your clients will take these handouts out with them, show their friends and dependent on that friend's colour psychology type, some of them will say, oh, tell me a phone number and other people will take a note of the phone number and write it surreptitiously, quietly. We're all different. <clears throat> so the types that they, they here's an example anyway of some of the type of information I might include for a client. So I've chosen a bright client. No idea why, but this is this is what I've written. So color selections use light and dark colors mixed together or one bold color on its own. Mix basics like black, charcoal, royal blue and red with many other shades to look great. Soft monochromatic blends will look rather dull on you. See what I've done? I've taken the three things that a client needs to know from a first colour session. What to wear, so I've told her the colours to wear, I've told her what to avoid and I've also given her her tonal title so she's bright then I've added some more details so I've added best colors for glasses so for a bright I've included shiny metals black navy dark brown or bright frames when in fashion so where I was the other day we're at uh, Meadow Hall I was in the coffee queue <clears throat> and I said to the lady in the front of me love those glasses frames I mean I'd have looked absolutely hideous in them because they were far, you know, they're very thick and the Harry Worth look, I don't know. But they were in blue and pink and purple, lots of gorgeous shades. Loved the colours, didn't like the style, certainly didn't like the heaviness of them. But those colours are available right now. Best colours for jewellery for a bright White pearls, shiny metals, that could be gold or silver. Do not discount gold just because they're bright. She could be a bright warm or a bright cool, or she could just be neutral. Be careful. Bright stones and enamels, polished wooden pieces. And then I spell it out even more by every handout I ever do always has a list of hard to wear colours and what to do about it. So for a bright, hard to wear colours are soft, dusky, muted colours. And I list a few of them like beige, sage green, dusky pink, mustard. They're not the best shades and will not be flattering next to your face. I'm very specific. But if you like these, maybe Great Aunt Ethel bought your bright client a mustard blouse for Christmas. And she has to wear it on Sunday because there's a family do. You know, she can't get out of it. Or maybe she even likes it. Who are you to say? Then here's the advice. If you like these colours, team them with a brighter colour next to your face or use a low neckline. This is the kind of stuff that's on those handouts. I've done it all for you. But I seriously recommend that you give out these simple tips in a handout. 
So Marta says, and where does the advanced training come in? <laughs> after colouring a box or after going through the expert? <laughs> OK, um, great question, Marta. I know from our conversations that you want to learn everything about colour. And you are su you're such a green personality. You greens out there, and there are plenty of you on this uh, call today. You drive me up the wall, but I love you to bits because you keep me on my toes. Thank you. Some of the advanced, because I've got an advanced colour analysis training course, some of the 23 different ways of doing colour analysis have been included in the colour confidence expert training. Not all of them, but some of them. And the advanced colour course also has a lot more about marketing and it also has a lot more about your mindset. So that course is slightly different. But you and I can talk about that later. You, do, you don't need to go there at all. It's do you want to learn more about colour? Do you want is your need, <laughs> your inner longing to learn everything there is about colour analysis, how to use it, how to present it to your clients, then colour confidence expert is definitely the one to go for. Uh, if you're more interested in, you've already got colour in a box and you want to learn more about colour, but you'd really like to work on the mindset stuff and about marketing, then advanced colour is the better choice. But you and I, like I say, we can talk about that Marta at any time. So I want to thank you all for joining me. I love doing these, as you know. Um, thank you for taking time out of your day. Thank you for your questions. Uh, Marta says, I want to learn everything you know. <laughs> you poor lamb. <laughs> Oh dear. oh dear yes right then so um i'll start with the color confidence expert because it really that's that was the point of creating that training 